Bhai, thanks for uh, coming and joining and having your time to interact with you and sharing your experiences uh, with us. Okay. Uh, I would like to start off by asking you about in terms of, I've known you for very long and you moved, actually you had a, your, your journey, your career from being a professional football player to a professional coach. You know, you are a AFC goalkeeper, level three coach as well. And not many people are able to convert your playing career into a coaching career. So could you take us through your journey and how things happened, what clubs you played and how did you move into being a professional coach? And that's, uh, I think, too many questions and to end together. All right. Your journey <laughs> about from a, a professional goalkeeper to mm. a professional coach. How did that happen? Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to see you again after a long time. Yeah. Uh, no, as uh, you said, uh, transforming from a player to a coach, you know, uh, I think it took, uh, it took to coaching quite naturally. Uh, as I was always fond of uh, uh, coaching, even during my playing days, I used to help the youngsters then. And then uh, after retiring, uh, my final year with Shillong Lajong, uh, when I retired after playing for a long time in Bangalore, when I went back to Shillong, the coaching journey started from Shillong. So they always uh, looked at me as a mentor. They, they signed me actually as a mentor because uh, I it was almost at the end of my playing career when I joined Shillong Lajong. So my role was more of entering the young players. Uh, and in the, in the process, you know, it, uh, I developed that liking into the coaching role. So it just happened from then onwards. Okay, that's great. Uh, so from your playing career, you moved to a coaching. So when you had to do the transition, from mm. playing. So how did you move in? What kind of licenses which you had to pick it up? How did the journey happen? So could you just take us a bit more on your becoming, ending your professional career or as a player to a, to a coaching as a, as a top Indian goalkeeper coach right now? Uh, thanks for the compliment, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when I joined Shillong Lajong, that was my end of the playing career, as I mentioned. And uh, we had the youngsters like uh, uh, Lalto Moya, Ralte, he was very young then. And initially, first year, I played most of the games. And then mm -hmm. the youngsters, they started proving themselves and they slowly, slowly took over. And then, you know, then you realize that it's time for the youngster to take over the role. Yeah. Then uh, I started uh, initially without having coaching badges. You know, I was training them, but without uh, any license. So those days we used to have that uh, A's bracket of, you know, you have to finish your C license before 35 years of age. I think uh, it was just in time I could get my license. And I was uh, 34 years and almost 35. I was 34 years when I got my C license while still playing in Shalong Lajong. And then uh, uh, took to coaching. Okay. So after that, what all you did uh, from C license and then how did you move in? to, you know, get your licensing done, what other licenses which you did? Uh, well, in Shillong Lajong, you know, I continued there for another uh, three, three seasons just with my C license. And then uh, I realized that I need to move out if I have to upgrade myself. And then uh, to become a better coach, you need to have that experience of working in different environment. Then uh, luckily, uh, Startup Football Academy offered me a role of a goalkeeping coach in, the, in TFA and then uh, I happily uh, accepted it and while in Tata Football Academy uh, they allowed me to upgrade myself and go for licensing and then uh, I completed my B, A and goalkeeping level one while I was in Tata Football Academy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now then currently you're in uh, a goalkeeper, AFC goalkeeper level three coach, right? That's yeah. what your current uh, this thing. Yeah. So, so from your playing days to the current coaching, how is goalkeeper coaching has changed? How have you seen the changes happening in a modern football, the modern level of coaching? Let's stick on to the goalkeeping itself. So when you played, you were being coached and now you're coaching young lads or you're coaching some of the Indian players as well. So how did that entire coaching methods have changed for a goalkeeper? Uh, honestly, when I look back at some of the exercises I used to do 
and I used to give so, to some of the youngsters. Uh, you know, I feel like laughing. You know, I, I I have been doing those things. You know, once you get your licenses and you upgrade your coaching knowledge, and then uh, get to know the modern methodology of training. You know, so many things have changed. You know, we have been doing so many wrong things in the past, uh, focusing on some other part. So now, as you say, goalkeeping is, you know, football is constantly evolving and you see a lot of uh, training methods have changed. Goalkeepers are mostly integrated with the team more often than being isolated. Of course, a little bit of isolated training to enhance the technical ability is also important, but there are more of team integration these days and uh, focuses on uh, playing out from the back. You need to be as good as an outfield player. So those things were not focused during our time. It was all about short stopping mostly. Okay. But, yeah. okay. The role is completely changed uh, in today's football. Right. Uh, so, Gumpe, I just want to understand that uh, you have worked with uh, many top professional teams. You work for the Indian uh, teams as well, the Indian national team as well. So, could you just take us through the preparation for a goalkeeper, okay, before the match, after the match, like a pre-match and post-match, what really happens? What are the inputs a coach? How do you prepare a player for a, for a game and for a, after the match as well? Uh, when you talk in the, like, since I've worked with different environments, like uh, from a grassroots to elite youth to senior level, uh, working with youth is a different thing altogether. But mm -hmm. when you talk about training senior professionals, I think uh, they are much uh, aware of what they need to do by themselves. You know, the role of goalkeeping coach at the higher level is to keep motivating them and then uh, a lot of video analysis are done. And then uh, the preparation is based on the opponents you're going to play, what type of uh, attack or what type of balls you can be expecting. Those things mm -hmm. are prepared. Uh, rather than just doing those daily routines of sort stopping and dealing crosses. Uh, that's a part of it, but a uh, lot of analysis is done. And mm -hmm. then the preparation is done based on the analysis, what you find from the opponent's strength. Right. Perfect. So, uh, so you brought in the topic of video analysis and, uh, uh, and you are one of the person who actually adapt technology. I've seen the way you have learned using your videos, analysis, the softwares, you have learned many things over there, okay? So typically as a coach, how do you make use of video analysis and how do you communicate? What all the, could you just take us some example where things have worked uh, when you communicate that to your players? Uh, I think, uh, thanks to Sports KPI, I think you guys have made it much easier for us nowadays. Uh, earlier, we used to record our own uh, training sessions when we work with the young young players, you know, you record your own session and go back and watch it over and over again. And then you can make out the technical technical faults and then you can show it to the players and uh, some of the match clippings, then you have to watch all the games. But with the technology now, things are much easier. We, we just need to get the clips of what is required to show the players. Uh, those things, you know, once you know, once you see those videos, then you get to know that uh, just rather than, uh, you know, blaming for the goal, you know, we can find out what were the problems involved. Is it only the goalkeeper or was it the defender or was it the midfield? So many things are involved uh, together. Like, you know, as you said, it's not just one mistake. It's a, it's a series of mistakes that happens before it actually goes into the goal. So yeah. analysis definitely it helps in a big way in uh, today's football. Sure. See, uh, people say that goalkeeping is not a is a very thankless job because when a goal get considered, it is a goalkeeper has always get blamed, right? With whatever happens, yeah. and uh, which might not be true because there is uh, uh, errors happening in the midfield or defender. But what really comes up is a goalkeeper, right? So yeah. when we bring in video analysis, so just take us with, with maybe some examples in terms of. What are, if you want to look at uh, analyzing of your goals conceded, how are goalkeeper considered? What do you actually look at before you communicate that to a player? Uh, first thing is, you know, you have to find out some, uh, you have to throw some questions into it. Like, uh, why did it happen? Yeah. When did it happen? And who all were responsible for that mistake? Was it yeah. the goalkeeper? Uh, was it... Is it a technical problem or is it a tactical issue? 
like different thing you have to throw, put those questions into it and then if you add those questions and analyze it makes things easier for you just rather than watching video anybody can watch it and you can make it but you have to get in details of if it's a technical problem how do i correct the technique okay because uh, if it is a technical flaws yes the goalkeeper has to work on technique and then uh, apply it in the game or if it was a tactical like a timing or not communicating with the players not organizing the back four uh, so many things are involved so you have to analyze from technical and tactical perspective to make a conclusion right perfect uh, so you you have worked with both the youth level and a professional level in grassroots there are multiple uh, age groups you have worked with right compared so now when we look at scouting is one of the key main role you know while identifying the talent right so as a coach what all the list of things when you to scout a player and scout mm-hmm. upcoming a good player what all things would you look at and say this kid has got a talent or is going to come in future uh when you talk about young players you know when we see young players there are a lot of things to look for of course uh, technical ability it always comes in first but uh, the player's attitude is very important you know okay. the his uh, intelligence level his cognitive ability has to be checked or is he a leader in the team or not there, there are certain elements you know which a coach cannot give yeah his communication his psychological traits are there which is difficult for a coach to give technically we can work on them we can give uh, them the technical abilities by a lot of uh, Uh, repetitive exercises can be done to improve technical uh, thing but there are certain thing as i said uh, like uh, psychological thing is characters how he carry himself uh, you know how he comes back after making a mistakes is he a leader in the team i think those things are more important to look at you know, to look for a long term prospect is this is in making ability uh, those things uh, i think uh, have to be looked at when you are trying to identify young talents okay that's great uh, so uh, let's say you're a scout you're watching a game you've gone to identify talent uh, there are many areas people say the goalkeeper has to be tall has to be lean there are multiple parameters they look at right so if you are looking at and so what is that maybe i would say three things which you look out for a kid and say hey he might be someone whom i want to work with or i want to scout him so what are those three or Maybe three or four parameters which you say so the things which I want to go with. Uh, it depends on age group you are looking at. You know, okay. when we are looking at ten and eleven years of age, you know, you cannot make out these children is going to grow uh, six foot or seven, uh, six foot three two. It's difficult to make out. But when you are looking at players at the age of fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, yeah, yes, that's the that's the time you have to you know uh, if you are trying to identify players you know who can make it big in. uh top level so then you can make out there this have got this physical abilities the technical abilities everything can be seen but lower level as i just mentioned about the some of the trait which is which comes naturally to some of the players those things are looked at when we're looking at young players uh, but when it get to higher level like 14 above 15 above then you know, it's time to make decision whether these boys can make it big or not Uh, okay. then you have to see you know position is specific goalkeeper mm-hmm. yes uh, if he is big always his height is always an advantage but it's not everything you have okay. seen uh, nawaz doing very well you know yeah. he, he is one of the shortest goalkeeper playing currently in indian football mm-hmm. but had a very good contribution in team success go fc goa's success correct so the style of play uh, the team uh, adopts mm-hmm. that also uh helps in choosing some type of goalkeepers like some players some coaches will be looking for uh, big because of his style of because of his style of play so right. height is not everything of course it is an advantage when we talk about international uh matches to choose players for the national team yeah, yeah. Then, then you have to look at physicality also then physicality plays a big role there okay okay that's great So uh, I've seen a couple of your updates, and then uh, uh, you know, football is all about numbers. There's so many numbers comes in, and numbers can be right. You know, These are called as stats, right? Yeah. There's so many stats in in football, and when it comes to goalkeeping, uh, it's not too many. You know, we look at clean sheets, 
uh, saves, goals conceded, and a lot more. So I'm talking about a professional players. You know, when you look at or look at their performances, do you look at these stats and what stats you generally look at, and would it really make sense for a coach to understand the performance of a player? Uh, when we talk about goalkeeper, you know, uh, it's difficult to judge them by looking at the number of goals they have conceded. Okay. You have to, at the same, equally, you have to look at the number of saves they have made. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, you have to go by every game and see how was his performance, uh, how many minutes he played. Uh, as we say, not every goal is a goalkeeper's mistake. You know, sometimes what happens, the team goalkeeper have a very good uh, uh, season, but he ends up considering a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. But that's not because of his mistake. But if the team is, uh, I think uh, uh, we had a discussion in one of your tweets uh, yeah. about the numbers. You know, yeah. every goal cannot be goalkeeper's mistake. We cannot judge a goalkeeper by the number of goals he have conceded. Mm -hmm. So we have to look into the team's performance also, how the team was uh, defensively, how they were performing and that as a team, not just a back four, as a team offensively, how good they were. If you are offensively good, that means your half of the defending is done. Yeah, your mm -hmm. ball is with you all the time, then you don't have to worry about defending. Yeah. If you allow the opponent to have possession, then you have to start defending. So as simple as that. You know, once you're defending, you are bound to make mistakes. And in the process, the goals also do happen for goalkeepers. And then everybody look at the number of goals you've conceded. And then sometimes some of the goalkeepers, they have a lot of number of clean seats. Mm -hmm. If you look at the uh, quality defenders they have in the, in the team setup and the team defending the way they defend as a team, you know, if it is very compact, then yeah. the goalkeeper has little to do. So, yeah. I think we can. Uh, I think it's difficult to judge goalkeeper performance just through the numbers. Just through the numbers. Okay. So, so there is a dependency about the other team players. Let's say, uh, so which will help out. The the numbers might change because there is a lot of context of the game, mm -hmm. and also it depends on your defensive line, uh, the defensive team as well, and it's purely not on the goalkeepers. What you're saying. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If you look at last uh, last ISL. Uh, some of the goalkeepers who have considered maximum number of goals. If you look at the top uh, five who have maximum considered, four of them mm -hmm. have the maximum number of saves as well. Mm -hmm. Look, Amaljit have made the maximum number of saves. Vishal mm -hmm. is there, Subratapal is there. Uh, these players have uh, they have they have made more number of saves. Mm -hmm. But the go if you count on the goals they have considered, then they comes at the bottom of the table that okay these goalkeepers are the one who have considered the maximum number of goals yeah 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 as a goalkeeping coach we need to look at them also like uh, the kind of saves they are making yeah okay that's great uh, so now uh, things have like you know as i said previously goalkeeper was only meant for start uh, stop uh, short stopping right and now the goalkeeper plays up and he is the one who distributes or the one who builds up the first level of attack Right now, things are like in terms of his distribution, distribution percentages, number of passes he played. So, do you have some of the numbers to look at what kind of a profiling of a goalkeeper he could be? Uh, I think the, the football has been you now, as we said, keeps evolving. Uh, mm -hmm. It all started after the evolution of the back pass rule. So, yeah. once that's uh, they stopped the back pass rule, then the goalkeeper started playing with the feet, and then you know now we can see a lot of goalkeepers who who are as good as an outfield players. So, of course, the, uh, for the distribution part, of course, the completion of pass is important. You know, how the team is keeping the ball position, how do they play out from the back and how goalkeeper is often used. Yeah, you can see some of the teams, goalkeepers, the moment he comes, he has a very good power, then they just clear it long and depend it on the forward to deal it. But there are other, some teams who like to keep the ball position and then where the goalkeeper's role comes into play. You, know, you must have a good goalkeeper who can uh, play out from the back. And it really helps in teams, in the ball position. Right. Cool. Great. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple more questions here. Uh, one, I was actually reading a, a concept where uh, a, a lot more advanced analytics has been done, where they collect the data of uh, the compare the goalkeepers in EPL 
and they compare the goalkeeper in championship okay how soon they release the ball from their hand okay mm -hmm. when they collect it they're saying that uh, the person who releases the ball in epl they are pretty much within 20 maybe 2 or 3 seconds and maybe in championship it's much more higher they tend to hold the ball for a long period of time okay mm -hmm. have you seen any of these kind of things coming to an indian uh, footballing scenario we're trying to collect the information about how long the person really holds on the ball how soon the ball has to be distributed on the pitch is something have you have come across or would that really make sense to understand the goalkeeper i think i think uh, so far we haven't come across that kind of uh, game uh, statistic reading in mm -hmm. indian football like uh, we have been counting on number of saves minutes played number of yeah. click sheets uh, those things i think uh, if if it, it happens i think will be very helpful for the goalkeepers and for the coaches all right perfect uh, all right so you are actually the one who has worked on video analysis met many analysts you have worked with in your career as well and analysis of a football is kind of maybe i would say slowly growing in the indian market as well right and we as a company sports analytics company we work with many analysts and 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 we generate them so now if an analyst has to understand a uh, requirements of a goalkeeping coach what are things you expect him to know about what would a goalkeeper coach wants it and maybe some few tips which you can provide him so that some of our readers or some of our fans who wants to pick up analysis in the career they might understand what typically a goalkeeper need a goalkeeper coach requires uh usually you know after the game is recorded it it depends on the coaches what yeah. type of clips you want from the analyst so yeah, yeah. depending on that you know if i need certain things uh, the moment what kind of moments i want him to uh, edit and give it to me so mm -hmm. it depends on the coaches what type of requirement is there but if the analyst have a little bit of playing background and understand football yeah it will definitely help if they have a good understanding of football and you know Uh, he will understand better you know he maybe he will do it uh, before the coach ask those things the things will be already there in place and when the coach comes and he say coach how about this so yeah. it will, that will help the coaches it i think a kind of time saving as well right right that's great uh so gumpe you're the one who have been traveled abroad you work with many international coaches uh, you've seen how things works in different countries as well Uh, so what do you think if those changes has to be brought into indian football or to to whatever level you know it could be from a national level or at a uh, even at a state levels and everything so what are the things which you, which you would recommend or maybe if you could suggest that these things is something which we have to bring up and and involve in our culture of football you know because you're the one who have been traveled a lot you understand many things so for the development of the game or the development of goalkeepers so any any inputs or tips which thing which should should work upon uh in this case uh, i think uh, i would suggest all the teams or uh, to have video analysis as a part of their uh, development process it's not just the senior team but in the youth as well you know in the youth the requirement is different and in senior also requirement is different but it definitely helps you know if i have to understand what kind of things i need to bring into my team what kind of improvement i need to bring into an individual you know it, it will def it definitely definitely helps so okay. i think uh, you know use of uh, video analysis is the, is the need of the hour so everybody all the club should use it and uh, as we said the statistics never lies you know mm -hmm. there are certain things you know when you play a game and some players they are not ready to accept their mistakes yeah you have to show it to them not blaming the players but yeah i think you could have done better right. and then some sometime you know when you work with young boys you know they are not ready to accept you know i think it was not my mistake or so yeah. not to blame any individual but you have to show them you know this is what happened actually and this is what you can do if yeah. you have a good understanding of that as a coach and you can uh, explain it to the to the players that you know this is where it went wrong and this is how we can do it better so then it, you can convince the player by showing them the videos right perfect uh gambe one couple of things here about uh, uh during your playing career what was the 
what are the uh, best uh, suggestion or a recommendation given to you by your coach? Uh, anything which you remember as a career which you still follow or, or you take through that? Uh, I think uh, when I started my playing career with Mahindra, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra those days, uh, uh, we, I had Henry Menezes still with the team. He 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 was almost uh, it, it was his last year, and I was starting. Okay. Uh, I had a very bad beginning, you know, of my career. Mm-hmm. The first two games of my life uh, played against those experienced big teams, so we ended up losing with a very big margin, big margin. Then uh, I felt that you know I started crying, and I felt that you know I think uh, this is somewhere I should not be, you know, I won't be able to handle this, you know, that those things started coming to my mind suddenly. Uh, then uh, there were two persons, you know, senior Santosh Kashyap and uh, Henry Menezes were there. So, mm-hmm. you know, they really helped me, you know, they said mistakes, everybody make mistakes, you know, this is nothing, take it in your stride. And uh, one uh, suggestion I remember, you know, they said, that just be yourself. Mm-hmm. What will happen? We lose a game. World is not ending there. So you have another chance to go. I think that really motivated me. I think uh, that that was one of the first uh, and uh, very memorable advice I got from a senior player. Perfect. Now that's amazing. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, other thing is all about, uh, there are many players who, it's not an easy job to move from a, a playing career to be a good coach, right? Uh, it requires, at least now, with a lot of licensing to be done, and how to plan your journey into becoming a professional coach, right? And what is your advice to people who are moving away, who are end of their playing career? And I'm sure they want to play more, but they have to, you know, take a call and then say, this is where I want to move to next, okay? Uh, is there any suggestion for you to provide to them saying that, how do they need to transition from a, from a playing career to a coach? Is there any suggestions on that? Uh... I think it depends on individuals. They have their own priorities. I think mm-hmm. it's it's not very wise on my part to give advice to uh, the, all the players who is at the end of the career to take up coaching. Maybe they are not interested in taking mm-hmm. up the coaching, but definitely, uh, you know, those who have a liking to coaching, you know, it gives you an opportunity to give back to what you have uh, gained from. You know, we have gained so much from football. You know, if you take football out from me, nobody will know me. Yeah. So yeah. then, you know, so it helps me to give it back, give back to the society and give it to the football, which has given me so much. And then, you know, you're still connected to football and yeah. uh, uh, it's a source of livelihood as well. So as we always say in the football uh, coaching profession, we, we discuss it with the coaches in the courses. So coaching profession, you know, you can, you can make a, career out of this also, even after you finish your playing career. Nice. Perfect. Uh, one, one last question, Gumpe, uh, with the, uh, looking at time as well. Uh, I've seen when I started my uh, journey understanding football in India, not many coach, many teams had a goalkeeper coaches. I've seen uh, players practicing themselves before the match and then they have not seen this as a very uh, uh, kind of a a coach which has to be kept for this professional uh, technique of a goalkeeper, right? And goalkeeping itself is a very unique technique which has to be uh, coached in a very separate manner, right? It can't be done in a typical, the other 10 players are going to play. Uh, so looking at this, there has been a trend where many people have taken up coaching right now and they want to become goalkeeper coaches, right? Uh, so what is your suggestions in terms of how do, like, you know, if they're currently working in youth, how can they make up the career and then become a professional goalkeeper coach? You know, what are your suggestions for them to become a, a good professional goalkeeper coach? Uh, nowadays, we can see, you know, the demand is increasing. Uh, the trend is changing. Earlier, you know, we are still not there yet uh, as a goalkeeping coach. The goalkeeping department has been, sorry, it has been kind of a neglected part in a football setup in most of the sorry, uh, football clubs across India. So there are, but now people are realizing the importance of a goalkeeping coach. As we say, goalkeeping coaches are, you know, coaches specialized in goalkeeping. You know, mm-hmm. you, you just 
can't be just a goalkeeping coach and just working about soft stopping. If you have to work at higher level, you need to understand the tactics of the game as well. You need to understand uh, much more than just the goalkeeping. So you need to have a uh, coaching like outfield coaching license as well. Like um, I have my A license as well, apart from having my level three. So mm-hmm. it helps you to understand the football better and uh, you can collaborate with the head coach in uh, discussing the team uh, strategy and other things if you have to work at higher level. But if you have to work with a uh, younger level, um, okay, maybe some coaches, they find it difficult to upgrade themselves in terms of licensing criteria. So they just can have a level one, but it's a specialized subject. Yeah. Uh, those who have played as a goalkeeper will be able to help the goalkeepers. We see a lot of uh, coaches who have never played as a goalkeeper uh, taking up these courses uh, up to level one, it is allowed. So yeah. they want to do it uh, to understand about goalkeeping. But uh, I would suggest all the former goalkeepers, you know, to take up these uh, courses, upgrade themselves and help the youngsters. Perfect. Uh, I think I would put the same question on the other side. How do you make, if a, goal, if a person wants to become a top goalkeeper, what is your recommendations or suggestions to them? To become a goalkeeper? Yeah, if someone oh. wants to become, I want to make my career as a goalkeeper okay. and uh, I'm just watching you and uh, you know, I want to become a goalkeeper, maybe at a youth level, 14, 15 or 12 or 13. So what is that you would recommend them to, uh, to become a quality goalkeeper? Uh, a lot of hard work and you have to be dedicated. Uh, and uh, you know, if you have to become a top goalkeeper, uh, you have to be focused and you have to set goals. If you don't yeah. have uh, any goals, you don't have any goal setting for yourself. It's difficult. You know, it's like driving across the town without any uh, road map. You know, if you don't know the map, road where it's leading to, you will be driving around. So right. have a target and work for it. And uh, if you work hard, anything is possible to achieve. Perfect. Hey, thanks, Gumpe. Thanks for your time and sharing your experiences and insights. I'm sure because goalkeeping is such a specialized topic. Uh, not, I mean, we need experts who can really speak about it. And you're one among them in India who can really has done it at different, different levels. Uh, I'm very fortunate to, you know, met you a long time back in Shillong. I still remember the coffee we had, you know, you took me to a restaurant in Shillong and uh, would love to, you know, understand and learn more from you. And we'll stay connected on this. Okay. But thanks for coming in, taking your time uh, to be part of this. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, uh, good discussion, a lot of analytical part. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Dupe. Take care. Thanks. 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 Take care. Bye.